always a thumb up there. Hasn't got any tinsel on it. It's not very seasonal, is he? Uh, but the unseasonal Jake Ellicott. Good evening, Jake. Hello, Dave. Hello, Lee. Hello, everyone. Uh, very seasonal Lee Wood with no tinsel or anything attached to him there. Very, very seasoned Lee Wood. <laughs> and we are gathered here <laughs> this evening. Um, for episode 26, is it? For our 25th match of a season, uh, Strong City versus Braintree Town. We're looking back on that from last Saturday. Pod full of Saints, I should have said somewhere in there as well. Um, right, we're going to look at that game and we're going to see whatever else comes up as well. Probably not a lot. Um, right, there we are. If you can't see it, that's where we were last Saturday. Braintree Town FA Trophy. When we played them at Crescent Road earlier this season in the league, they looked abysmal. Um, First, Philip e Eaton was putting an email here. They were surprisingly well organised last Saturday and they had to do a lot of defending after having Marcus Johnson Schuster dismissed on, what, 15, 16 minutes. And they did defend really well, didn't they? Got the nil-nil draw. Yeah, I mean, I thought they defended better with 10 men um, than, than with 11, to be honest. That first 15 minutes wasn't amazing, but you could always tell they were sort of potential openings. They seemed rattled as well before the, before the red card. Their manager had already been given a talking to and a booking. They were clearly not happy at all. But that booking, that sending off and the subsequent injury for Hugh Dawson just seemed to give them a chance to reset and go defensive. And as you say, it worked well for them, to be fair. I mean, we have to say it was a pretty poor challenge, I thought. Um, like, well, Hugh got a few injuries by the sounds of it. So hopefully he's all right. But yeah, Braintree Town, Looked a bit more organised than the last time we played them, but that's not really saying much, though, is it? Lee? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've got to start with, with the tackle first. I mean, the fellow goes, yeah, I was going for the ball. Well, of course you were, mate. Which one? You know, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was horrendous. Um, I, spoke, I spoke, to, spoke to Dawson's dad in the bar at half-time. He didn't seem particularly concerned about it. He said, yeah, he's got a... You know, quite a deep cut on one thigh. He's got some stub marks on the other on the other knee, but he was just more than happy to sort of sit there and have a few beers in the bar. So absolutely no concern whatsoever. I think I, I think the club are sort of taking it a little bit more um, seriously. But uh, Braintree, they defended absolutely superbly. Um, it sort of almost played into their hands. The fact they had the backs against the wall, they had to be a bit more resilient. Um, it's interesting that we've spoke about over the past few weeks about City's defence, um, where I think this time we have to look at the attack because they, you know, we wasted a couple of glorious guilt edge chances to go ahead. Uh, and um, I think it just highlights the lack of plan B if things don't go our way early doors in a game. Um, you know, Sean Jeffers, normally absolutely clinical in front of goal, had a couple of chances to put us ahead. Um, I think one thing I would say, when we went down, well, sorry, when when they went down to ten men, it was almost as though people thought, oh, this 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 could be anything, couldn't it, Tabs? You know, it could be three, four, five, but it wasn't like that at all. And I thought we have to stay hungry and we have to stay humble in games like that. And I and I don't think we did. I thought we were pedestrian, ponderous, and predictable. We went across the pitch. We went back across the pitch. It was only in the last five minutes we put any pace into it at all. Um, we totally lacked invention. Um, and we could have lost. They, they could have got a goal while we were upon, but unable to break them down. But it was unlikely. Of course it was unlikely because uh, we were so much on top throughout the whole game. But you never really felt there's a goal coming here any time now. It was just so predictable, wasn't it? I think the fact that they were they were playing for penalties from, from about the hour mark, weren't they? Probably even before that, which says quite a lot about their mentality. But it was up to us. It was up to us to break them break them down. They were quite happy for us to have the ball in front of them. They had you know banks of defenders, but you know it was disappointing that we couldn't do that um, in the ninety minutes. But uh, you know we're still through. But again, it was hard work. So you say we look at the attack after. Our attack after that game, believe, which is quite right, of course. But also, is it the midfield? There wasn't a proper somebody in there with an instinct to change. We can't keep doing this. We've got to do something different. A David Keenly side, perhaps. Somebody who can put that ball through and uh, open up a defence out of nothing. Uh, I'm going back a bit there, Lee. You were around. Um, 
it, it seemed to lack that, didn't it? Yeah, I think I think you saw when Hugh Head went off, when we were facing him with Big Dave, we all love Big Dave, but, you know, as a defensive mid against 10 men, you know that maybe we're just lacking a little bit of something else in midfield at the minute. David Noble's been unwell. Hugh Dawson's got, you know, a potential injury that might knock him out for a little while. Kyron Wiltshire is not really the most sort of player to find those sort of through balls. I think, absolutely, we did miss that little bit of spark. Why isn't he, Jake? You know, he was brought in for a reason, isn't he? You know, he's he's not a... You know, you've got to ask questions about this because Braintree are one of the the poorest sides that we're going to be meeting. And we're only going to be meeting, you know, a higher opposition now going through the competition. So we're going to have to look at these players to, to sort of, you know, impose themselves on games like this. Yeah, absolutely. I think in the front line as well, I thought we mixed Mitchell Vice and when he didn't come on, I think there's a bit of surprise. I thought we missed him throughout. Um, so, yeah, again, you know, going forward, we've, we've done really well this season. And of course, you know, it was extreme circumstances against 10 men pretty much sat on the edge of their box. But you want to be unlocking that, don't you? Because we're going to be going against sides like that this season. Yeah, Sean missed a good chance, didn't he, first yeah. half, put it over the bar. Uh, Callum Adebay should really have had that header as well. They were probably two yeah. best chances in the whole game. And um, we, di- we didn't take them. But, uh, I just feel at the moment, Sean is probably looking to try and get too many free kicks. I've, I've, you know, I don't know if you saw my notes the weekend. I, I said he's getting a bit like Harry Kane. He's looking for free kicks rather than doing what he's best at, which is scoring goals. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, I haven't particularly noticed that myself, but it is noticeable that he's stopped scoring goals all of a sudden. How many games is it now? Three or four? Days? It, it's four, which is, four. it happens, doesn't it? It happens. But when you're a striker like him that's been banging him in pretty much every game, of course that's going to be noticeable. But I'm sure he'll be able to step above that. And But I thought on Saturday, again, the front three didn't quite connect and get that forward play going that we've had in recent weeks. You know, so many times he's been there on the penalty spot just to tap in a ball that's come, been cut back. It just didn't really happen at all, apart from that one chance, as you say, that he spooned well over the bar. Um, don't know how he managed that quite, but yeah, you know, he, he'll go through these phases. Um, he's experienced. I'm sure he'll be able to fire again, hopefully on Boxing Day. I think you're a bit surprised that Mitchell Vice not only didn't start, didn't come off the bench. Hmm. That, I mean, I can somewhat understand it because it was good to see Sam Meeks come on. He did well at Hartford in midweek. We've got to give these ch- lads a chance. We've talked about that actually in last week's episode. If you haven't watched, go back. Um, but yeah, when you want to be getting through the competition, I don't know if, if you want to be leaving Vice on the bench unless Ian's protecting him or he's got a bit of a knock. Who knows? Of course we know. News is always put on the website. <laughs> hey, we got we got injury news last week. Can't complain, Dave. That's not bad, is it? What's it taking to the second week of December? That's pretty good going, isn't it? And they even had uh, fixture alterations as well on there. Whoa. It's getting better and better. It doesn't matter the dates of one of them was wrong. That doesn't matter. It's, it's, you know, it's a start. I will say that. <laughs> that hey, they're in- trying, mate. They're trying. They, they are trying. That, that injury update was useful. For us fans, you know, likes of Bailey Brown, etc. <laughs> David Noble, we had no idea where he was. So at least fans can know. Uh, I was interested in quite a, a few supporters I saw said, oh, why are the club releasing this information? That's giving other managers, you know, a hint as to who we're playing in the next couple of weeks. Come on, guys. I think other managers... supporters missed, who haven't yeah. listened to interviews before the current lot started doing them. Ian was very freely give that information when he's asked. Exactly. So, but anyway... We actually won on Saturday, despite our negativity. We're through. I mean, what did you think of the penalty shootout? And what did you think of Billy Johnson, Lee? Billy, don't be a hero. Billy. I mean, to be honest with you, he threw all, he threw most of them in. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm all for it, fella. You know, he was giving it the big one and he was trying his absolute best to delay the tactics and he was time-wasting throughout the game. But... Uh, that has to be one of the worst performances by a goalkeeper in a penalty shootout I've ever seen in my entire life. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't he asking some of our supporters which way to dive during the shootout as well? Like, sort of, oh, which way do you think well, I should go? Well, he didn't bloody really work, did it? Because no. <laughs> even when he guessed right, they would go through him. You know, he was like the human polo, wasn't he, in the end of the day? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. 
Actually, anyway. that's actually Phillips put it in his email. He, he said, uh, in the penalty shootout, the keeper, the good judge at where the penalty was going, but helpfully contrived to dive over or under the ball. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a... Uh, I mean, you know, Philly, we, <laughs> we had a good conversation with him at the Brain Tree Away game. I think some Was that what it was? Thought, yeah, some <laughs> supporters <laughs> offered to buy him a few shots. I you two you won't remember, remember it from that day, goodness sake. <laughs> a conversation normally is like a two-way thing. There wasn't a lot of reaction <laughs> from Billy, was there? Anyway. No, but, yeah, I mean, it was a, yeah, not the greatest shootout quality-wise, but fair play to Saints. And again, Michael Johnson stepping up to make those saves once again. But he's unbelievable, isn't he? Uh, Joy, you kind of missed the penalty, didn't he? Yeah, I was quite... Do you remember surprised. when he actually scored in the penalty shootout down the park? Nope. Uh, same day that, I can never remember, name, remember his name, Alkio Banny also scored. They both scored for um, Watford under 12s or whatever it was when we put them out of the heart senior. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. Oh, that's going back three, four years, isn't it? Bloody hell. It's got to be, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, funny enough, they, they both scored, but we beat Watford 3-2. Uh, um what about Sean Jeffers? He scored 11 penalties in open play, three out of three now in playoffs. It's phenomenal, isn't it? He's, yeah, he's unbelievable, isn't he? He must be one of the best takers at this level and above. Just so composed. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's not scoring goals, but he's scoring penalties. Well, I think that's all down to confidence, though, fellas. You know, yeah. because the fact that he's got a standard, he's taken that responsibility well with on his shoulders, um, which is, I don't, I'm not that too um, sort of concerned the fact that he's not scoring goals in open play at the minute. He's got that confidence. He's got that that stature and composure around his game anyway. It's only going to be a matter of time before he's banging them in again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, definitely. I, I would say as well, fair play to Alex Lankshire to take that decisive penalty. You know, Billy Johnson probably should have saved it, but in the end, they, it went in. That's all that matters. And fair play to Alex for stepping up and taking that when Again, there's probably more senior players in the team that probably could and maybe should have stepped up in front of them. Our 25th penalty shootout, 14th win, and two penalty shootouts against Braintree Town, and two wins for us. Oh, easy, isn't it, this, this penalty shootout lot? Oh. Well, that, <laughs> that win bagged us another, uh, I don't know, bit of money. So we've got 8,250 from the trophy so far. In the next Ooh. round... <laughs> Next round, home to Chesant. Um, you've got to fancy our chances in that, haven't you, surely? I fancied our chances against Braintree, mate. It didn't, it almost come undone. So, um, well, yeah, it's, who knows, mate? Who knows? Because yeah. this is going to be their, this is going to be their cup, isn't it? You know, this could be their cup final, local, locally sort of team. So they could be well up for it, Tabs. It's a great, it, without being dismissive of them, like we were Braintree, actually. Um, it's a great draw for us, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if we win this, mate, we we are in the mix. And dare we dare we whisper? You know, the words "final" again. I mean, I don't know. It's... Again, again. When were we last in it? Well, half an hour away, mate. Back in those dark, dark <laughs> days in Stroud. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's 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 a good draw. Takes us against two former Saints, isn't it? Taylor Miles and Tom Gardner, who I'm sure City fans will absolutely remember. Um, but yeah, when you go into that draw, you, you probably want a lower league side, don't you? Someone below us. And we got that. We avoided some of the big clubs. And, you know, we avoided going, well, we avoided the likes of Rex and we can't even go to. So, um, yeah, it's a winnable game. And that's all we wanted, really. Yeah, that, that fourth round is on the 15th of January. Uh, it's three more rounds after that before you get to the finals. So we're, we're still a little way off it yet, but we're getting there. And if we beat Chesham, that's another 5,250. People just keep throwing money at us. Ching! 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 When, Dave, how long has it been since we last reached this stage? Quite a few years now, isn't it? I mean, I, I know keep, you don't... Hmm. They change the format, don't they? Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Merry <website>. Christmas! <laughs> um... But yeah, you talk about all that money. I mean, again, we've been asked this week by supporters <laughs> whenever the Saints game to invest in the squad. Um, and interestingly, we were asked what should be the priority: central midfielder, a right back, or a backup striker. Now, um, it's interesting, isn't it, Lee? I don't know if, if you one of those positions you would you would go for. 
yourself? Yeah, stick layers right back. Oh, God. Hey, I'll do a job. Tell oh. one. I'll do <laughs> a job. Dearing me. But why is there a situation now that we can't get all three? Yeah. You know, it, it's a... Well, you know, you know, we're talking about grandeur and the reach to have three absolutely fantastic players in those key positions. Call me old-fashioned, but if we need a right-back, go and buy a bloody right-back. If we need a midfielder and a striker, likewise. Yeah. Um, appreciative then they're not always on the market and we don't want to get players that don't fit into the system etc etc but you know we're in a position that we can go out and get these but and there must be there, there must be players who want to come and play for us in Northern City surely yeah it's something we brought up many times I think since uh was it 30th of August when poor old Devante got his injury at right back and we've mentioned midfield and I think we've probably mentioned the backup forward as well yeah um well, you know, the website's finally listened to us. Maybe the club, uh, whoever buys players, they'll be listening to us as well now. I think, you know, I think it's fair to say. I think Ian and his management have been doing a lot of scouting. So it's just whether that right person's out there. So hopefully soon. The right scouts? <laughs> yeah, the right scouts. <laughs> the other big uh, good news from last Saturday was uh, Michael Johnson playing the whole game, wasn't it? Whereas he played, what, two-thirds of it at Hartford. So he's obviously back to full fitness. Didn't seem to have a towel in his goal. Oh, don't mention the towel. Oh, Dave. Um, yeah, it was good. We know how important he is to that back line now, don't we? You know, he's so important. And again, Saturday, he didn't have to do much. But when he did do it, he did it well, saved the penalty, did his job. And, you know, he didn't concede Saturday. And when you've got a back four as well, that's a chopping and changing at the minute with injuries, etc. It's really important to have someone like Michael Johnson back. So, Happy to see him there. Well, getting back to Philip Eaton's email again, he, he mentioned um, we haven't played well since Oxford City. You can discuss that. Um, but we kept clean sheets in the last three games. So if you're keeping a clean sheet, at least you're not going to lose. Yeah. Very hard not to keep a clean sheet against Hartford. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but if, ben. Can, but if you compare yourself if you compare the performances, you know, a month earlier or even two months earlier, you know, there's something, is it, is it the players are getting tired? Is it the fixture congestion? Is it the fact that the teams are now figuring us out? Don't forget as well, we, we talk about Jeffers not scoring goals. This has happened to us before when Reese Morel Williamson was banging them in nice and early and then he got found out they the sort of defenders we've got wise to him. The same with Ishafano. Okay, he had injuries, but maybe this is possibly the thing with Sean as well. You, If you isolate him, he struggles, you know, and maybe then our other attacking players don't get into the game as much, don't influence the game as much, but I don't know. I mean, performances come and go, but it's, it's the results that matter. Um, and we won on Saturday and, and we progress. So, it will just give us another opportunity now to, to sort of, you know, wipe the slate clean and kick off against Hemel. Yes, that Boxing Day game away to Hemel Hempstead Town, kick off at Boxall Road is 3pm. Uh, it? Dave, it's going to kick off long before that, mate. Don't worry about the 3pm. <laughs> I mean, last year was the first year of our plastic pitch. It was only a short season. I think they won, what, one home game on it then. And here we are, back end of December this season. They still haven't won on it. So it's been a fantastic investment for the uh, first team. Oh. oh, you've jinxed it now, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, of course we have. Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, we we got to go there confident, haven't we? They're not in amazing form. We're neither are we, but, you know... And I noticed they're creeping up that table. I don't like that. But, you know... It's all on their away form, isn't it? They've got quite a yeah. good away record now. But was it last week against Chippenham when they lost 2-0 at home? Something like five players with COVID, so somebody said? Yeah, yeah. I think they've, they've got issues. They've had a lot of injury issues this season. Mark Jones, manager, we should mention, he came in to, uh, two, three months ago now, isn't he? Ex-Oxford City. And he's slowly turning the ship around. I think he started bringing his own players. But, as you say, when you've got COVID issues, injury issues still... You're going to be struggling, aren't you? And that defeat against Chippenham, I suspect, will give them as a bit of a knock going into this game. Yeah. Lee? Yeah. Are you still there? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yes. uh, hey, well, come on. Apart from it kicking off early because you're going to the uh, Queen's Head or whatever they're called over there. Oh, God. 
Um, oh, God. It's, it's, it's going to be a good atmosphere. Match isn't segregated, though, is it? No. Surprisingly. It, the one wasn't the one before COVID weren't either, were they? The ones before COVID. And they weren't too badly behaved then. I think it'll be fine. I think mm. I suspect there'll be quite a few Saints fans travelling on the day. I don't know what Hemel's home support will be like because it, it wasn't amazing. Again, the last game we had with fans down at their place, you know, they similar to Bournemouth in a way, and that's that's a bit insulting actually to Hemel. They had a lot of fans that were glory hunters in a way that would only turn out for these games against us, they were the likes of West Ham, Luton, etc. They seem to have slowly filtered away a little bit. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it's going to be well, it's, too bad. It's no surprise, Jake, when you're getting dicked on every, every single week, week, mate. To be fair, you know, people don't gonna, don't want to go and watch that fella. You know? no, that, <laughs> so that, it's... Yeah, that, that is very true. And I think I think it will be better without segregation. It's much more non league. I mean, I think the segregation actually caused more tension and more issues, really than was particularly necessary and I, I don't see it being this most issues the last couple of years have come from youths around the, the estate setting fireworks up and that's it really well the highest home gate so far season is 674 the average is under 500 496 even so you'd imagine there'd be a thousand there if it's a decent day they'll be hoping so Boggins won't be happy if there isn't it'd be interesting to see how many we take actually after the Bournemouth and our recent run <clears throat> We'll probably be looking at the, the biggest amount we're taking in a little while, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. You'd be disappointed with th- th- under 300, wouldn't you? You'd have thought so, but I suppose the factor is it's Boxing Day and we haven't we haven't travelled there on a Boxing Day before. It's Boxing we? Day and it's 3pm. It's that bit later, yeah. you know. Normally, people can go and watch a one o'clock game at Clarence Park on Boxing Day, still go home and, and, and have their family sort of time. This doesn't sort of fall into that... Uh, bracket this time fella. Yeah. so it'd be really interesting but listen we always travel in in numbers we always travel well there um and there'll be enough people there at the ground to to cheer us on yes last time we went there boxing day was 2012 uh one all draw oh that's when uh tremaine charles scored um halfway through the evening when most people have gone home i think and we, we got that, that one all draw yeah, it has to be said for anyone that hasn't been all our new supporters or people that haven't gone to a long time they always end up there's been quite a few entertaining games down there, quite a few late goals, it's worth mentioning as well. So, if you're nothing to do on a boxing day, it's definitely, definitely worth the trip down there if you can make it. Of course, plastic pitch brings in the money, doesn't it? And uh, you all think brings in the money, so you get a good team, you get success, but it's, it's not happening for them. They're in their second year of it now. Mm, no, um, I think Mark Jones is a good appointment. I think that's you know that he'll keep them in the conference south, and that's probably all they want. We, What's interesting to note is I understand they've done quite a lot of stadium improvements, though, and I suspect a lot of that has come from the pitch. I think they've even got a scoreboard now. How fancy is that? So I think any Saints fans that go will get surprised by how many changes there have been. <laughs> Lee laughing. Um, and, you know, Boggins is clearly in- reinvesting, um, but I think he's more than happy to make that money from the 3G, 4G. Probably keeps him on a very good balance, I suspect. But the way their home form's going, I would have thought the biggest improvement they could do is turn the stands around the other way and get them facing away from the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, Tabs, you know, to touch on, on your point there, mate, there's no point having all this money coming if you're not going to spend it, you know, because <laughs> it's... You Sounds need familiar? Well, you, exactly, my friend, exactly. You know, because they're going to... if The way they keep going, they're going to have the best, you know, plastic pitch <laughs> in the Southern League, mate. So, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's worth noting, you know, not so long ago, a couple of years ago, they were perennially like top six, top seven challenges, weren't they? Playoffs, playoffs, semi finals, etc. They haven't really been able to recreate that for a couple of years now. Shame, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Shit. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> yeah, I hope you're well. You know, you know, we're heading for a fall after all this, don't you? Yeah, oh. but until that time, mate, all a bunch of shadows. Anyway, yes, yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in the FA Trophy, they went out uh, on penalties against uh, Stourbridge at Vauxhall Road. Yeah, a couple of years ago, wasn't it? A couple of years ago, a couple of weeks ago. About the end of November. <laughs> Feels like years. <laughs> time time does drag, mate, in an impairment, to be fair. So, so. <laughs> um, yeah, and the form hasn't been particularly great since then, has it? So, um, I don't know who is in their actual lineup now. There's so many changes following the appointment of Mark Jones. It's, yeah, 
I don't know who we're going to be going up against. I think they've got the likes of Gus, Scott Morris still, etc. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, don't you hear from Alan Mitchell anymore, their uh, press guy? No, I still do, but I think he's probably drinking Guinness somewhere um, rather, rather than talking to me, to be honest. <laughs> This time you've been quiet. Yeah. Oh, dear. But what you got, mate? A prediction for this? No, you can't predict snow or anything like that. You've got to go for a football result. I'm scared. COVID. I'm scared. COVID. Oh, here we yeah. go. <laughs> I don't even know why I bother with predictions. I'm just astronomically bad with them. Um, so if you have a bloke, don't take it personally. I know, but even so, come on. Um, I. I want to say, I want to say like a three 0 win for City, but now I've said that they're probably going to absolutely spank us. So uh, I, don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Predict a f- defeat. We always win when you predict it. Um, <clears throat> I'll go, I'll go two one Saints. This is it. That's the um, confidence do, we want. Do we have to talk about the Oxford game as well? Because we don't know if we're going to be doing a podcast between them. Oh, do yeah, we we're better doing, we? Yeah, we're playing them like two days later. What's that all about? Well, I've forgotten about that. They're any good? <laughs> yes, actually. Surprisingly so. Um, although, you know, we beat me. Is this the team that we beat 4 1? Like yeah. <laughs> three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, since then, of course, they had uh, a few days at the top of the table. Now, they got uh, shoved off last week by Ipswich United. Um, apart from to us, they, they don't lose often this season. No. Um, well drilled side. It'd be interesting to play them not on their 3G. We know that their surface, I think, gives them a bit of an advantage down there. Well, we proved that wrong anyway, but it'd be good to get them down the park Tuesday night at Christmas. Should be a good crowd. And we know we know what the danger men are. We know it's Joe Chifano. We know it's Harvey Bradbury. You know, they we kept them quiet last time. I know Joe scored, but they didn't cause us too many issues. But we know they'll be more than eager to come back to Clarence Park and bang a couple of goals in. Well, Finn Harvey scored in their last league game as well. I think he did, yeah. So, you know, both of them have been coated off enough by us and Saints supporters, so they'll have something no, to prove. No, Harvey Bradbury is a top-class footballer, my friend. <laughs> I'm glad you that said week, footballer. That, <laughs> that week, that week, it, I'm not going to say it's going to define our season, but it will certainly go a long, long way at a sort of, you know, really either kicking us on or, or, or dragging us back into the, you know, the playoff. Yeah. Oxford, Hemel. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's really, really vital. We don't let any results slip during that period there. Yeah. In fact, they lost their last home game. It was uh, 4-2 to Dorking, because Dorking on a bit of a run <coughs> at the moment. Like Ebsleet, they're coming through the pack. Yeah. Like, like, like we will be shortly, Dave. <laughs> right, let's have a look where the top teams are playing on uh, Sunday. Oh, well, I say Sunday, according to his um, team sheet in our last home game. Um, next home game is Saturday, the 28th of December. Well, well over, over, up, you know? over, over Christmas, every day feels like a weekend, doesn't it? It does, so, doesn't yeah. it? Um, <laughs> anyway, the top size uh, Dartford Ebb's fleet. And of course, they've got the return game on the January the 2nd. Dorking haven't, so you've got. Four of the top sides playing each other there, which is uh, no bad thing for us. Points are going to be dropped left, right and centre. Yeah. And Oxford City got Slough Town twice um, over Christmas. Well, Slough are picking up, so that's not six points in the bag for Oxford. And then Maystone have got Tunbridge twice. Well, Maystone would fancy both of those games, I think. And Dulwich have got Welling twice. They're going to fancy their chances in both of those. Okay. But it's a few points going to be dropped there. Absolutely. Hopefully, Tombridge can put in a reform, repeat of their performance last weekend from when they beat Torquay. Um, but yeah, it, as Lee said, this next couple of weeks, a week even, defines well, it doesn't, well, it almost does actually. Mate, it's vital. You know, it I cannot emphasize it's absolutely it vital. Yeah. You know, as Tav said, you've got, you've got teams above us and around us taking points off each other, left, right, and centre. It's up to us now. We can get, if we can get three wins, you know. That can really propel us up there, and that would really again make us to another contender. But we got to yeah. stop. We have to start putting in the performances to warrant those uh, those wins as well. Yeah, of course. What would have been a big match for us on the fifteenth of January against Ebbsfleet is now kicked to one side because of the Chesson game. And yeah. two days after that, we're away to uh, Chelmsford, and twenty four hours after that. Some team probably be us three at home to uh, Hitchin Town in the Hart Senior. 
indeed. Lots of big games coming up, big performances required. And you've got the lurking prospect again of off-the-field COVID, government restrictions again. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks. The club tweeted out early today in motion about the Hemel game. And it's a bit depressing to see this is, you know, dependent on government guidance on crowds. It's like, uh-oh. Because not... uh, they've already done it in Scotland, haven't they? Reducing and Wales. Crowds. Yep. Yeah. Not really so... affect Scotland at all, crowds. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> You're right. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, the players have had a decent rest over the next, over this week. You know, they've just got to concentrate on what they can do on the pitch, put all that aside, you know, and just the Boxing Day. You know, I think the Boxing Day game, at least, we will get with crowds. Just put in a great performance. Whatever happens after that, whatever happens, but put in a great performance, get three points. And we'll hey, see what Stop blabbering, mate. Beat the Hemel. Come on, boys. Yeah, Here we beat go. The Hemel. Beat the Hemel. Beat the Hemel. Yes. <laughs> Which we joke, stop blabbering. What have you been doing the last uh, two or three years on this? More than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. Um, Hemel kick off three o'clock. Oxford City kick off three o'clock. Home to Hemel, January the second, and that's Oxford, one o'clock. Oxford City seven forty-five. Not three o'clock, Dave. You're as bad Shut as the website. Didn't ask your opinion. <laughs> that's why they marked him off, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me! Not like any of us have been mugged off either. Come on. Oh, oh, mate. Scathing attack. This is this is the season of goodwill and joy. It's, well, yeah, it's, you know, you know, we want all Saints fans to have a lovely Christmas, don't we? <laughs> Apart from mm. Dave. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, dearie me. Anyway, good. Right, are we done? I think so. I Pretty think much. we are. I Pretty think we are, boys. Well, I think that's. Uh, I have to say, thank you so much for everyone for the very kind comments uh, towards our pod we've been absolutely astounded by the reaction of you all just three random blokes waffling in their front rooms and stuff so uh please keep your emails coming in keep your tweets coming in we will try and um give you the supporters a, a voice to the club in best we way we can jake do you want to give them our twitter handle my friend after you've done done that gin <laughs> yes it's that a pod full of saints um yeah i'll just say the same you know we are here to re- you know, represent the fans, um, give the fans a voice. Hopefully, it, it you know, it has been working. Again, we only are supporters of the club. We love the club. You know, that's it. And it, uh, we'll never get used to random people coming up in the street saying, we love the pod. Who are you? Who are you people? <laughs> Find me a drink and then, and then we can talk. It's yeah, great. <laughs> but talking of spectators having a voice, you need a pretty loud voice to speak to each other down the park nowadays because that sound oh, system, where you can hear it, my God, it blows your eardrums out. It it should be just background noise. The team should be nice and loud so you can hear who's playing, but the music, oh, for goodness sake, turn it down. You moan when you can't hear it. You moan when you <laughs> can hear it. It's not that difficult to get it right, Lee. Yeah, no, I think... Well, I get it right on um, Greatest Hits Radio. I'll get the volume right on that. Greatest Hits <laughs> Radio. Wow, what's is that? that? It, is that a thing? <laughs> Blimey. Um, I, you know, we have to, you know... Do you not listen to, to, to Radio Verity, Dave? <laughs> Can't get it out here. The wire doesn't stretch out here. Radio Verity is brilliant, Dave. You should try it sometime. It's not since <laughs> Danny left, is it? They're missing Danny, aren't they? Oh, that's that's really know. Amazing. You've got Johnny Seabrook, mate. The bloke's a yeah. legend. What's Graham he Griffin. What's talking about? Oh, you know, associated yeah. co-commentators <laughs> that may or may not be allowed on anymore. Who knows? You know? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, now you started something. Now yeah. you started something. Yes. Yes. Jake, we had Peter originally doing that thing for the Hampton game. Um, you don't seem to have been called up much this season. No, I mean, it seems to be a little bit similar to we discussed Colin, Colin Toms. I'm sure everyone knows he's the bloke with the crazy hair at Clarence Park. Um, he was told that he couldn't go on, and I did, I did the Haven game. I hope it went really well. And then a little birdie tells me I'm. I've been not particularly welcome back, not by Radio Verily, but by potentially the club. So not really sure why I'm not allowed back on the radio. Um, disappointing, because I didn't think I did anything wrong on that commentary. I kept it as neutral, and I was talking about as a supporter, and I still do the non-league paper, etc., part of the media. Forget this for a second, you know. So that was a bit disappointing to find out the other day, and a surprise, actually. So, yeah, a bit disappointing, but at the end of the day, you know, 
I'm not the Tough first one. Tough Jake. It's all about community, mate. Well, yeah, I'm not the first one on the pod to sort of suffer that. Not the first supporter at all. But, you know, we will just keep battling on, keep, you know, representing supporters' views. And at the end of the day, this is a football club, <coughs> lad. Everyone, it's a football club. It's not that serious. It is, you know, it's for everyone. It is a community. It is not certain people's play toys, etc. It is all of ours. And so, so you think that your position on this pod is the reason why you're not allowed to co-commentate on Radio Verona anymore? Surely the only, surely the only people who should dictate that is Radio Verona. Yeah, potentially. Um, I say this isn't at all attack on Radio Verona, by the way. I love. We love them. Radio Verona. Yeah, they're doing <laughs> and again. They're all volunteers. They're doing a great job. From what I've been told, it's been made by the club above them, and I think it's because the club use the commentary on the highlights. Um, so the club don't. I mean, those highlights that I was commentating on last season, anyway. So um, don't know what's changed then, but yeah. So it's, but it's actions changed. like this that that perpetuate that division amongst yeah. the fans and the club. Surely, I mean, you know, you said you said nothing, nothing wrong in that commentary, mate. And and people seem to realise that because because you're not a lap dog, um, you know that 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 you can't have a say, you can't have a positive outcome on on the outcome of, of, of any media channel, surely. No, no. I mean, I had heard the excuse we used was something I'd said on the commentary, so I don't know what it was. Um, I thought, you know, there you go. But, you know, as you say, it sort of, it, it dampens things a little bit after what I'd say has been a good couple of months of the club improving relationships with supporters. Not everything's been great, but it has oh, been. Oh, dear. It, okay. <laughs> but it has, it has been improving slowly. There has been improvement. People... Everyone's slowly getting back on board. Supporters are returning. Clubs doing some good things. Um, so yeah, I was a bit of a surprise. Again, it's only really an issue for me. Bit bit disappointing, but well keeps going. But yeah, just a bit of a surprise. It's funny Merry you Christmas, say, Jacob. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> it's, it's funny you say you've done nothing wrong in those commentaries, uh, Jake. Because I've got I've got one or two points here I wanted to raise <laughs> with you from them. You're the one who did it. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, mate, in comparison to some of the absolute dross they've had on there over the past sort of four months, Jacob is the very least of their concerns, surely. Well, uh, and but it's a genuine question. So I know that I know that Andy's worked absolutely fantastically hard to sort of try and build those bridges that were burned by by sort of previous allies of convenience over the last sort of year or so, and it's it's, it's done a fantastic job. So this is certainly a back. It's a backward step, you yeah. know. Because yeah. Michael, Michael Clark, God bless him, he's gonna, he's not gonna want to be up there every other week, you know. He's gonna want to be down playing football at some point, so they have to sort of yeah. find someone uh, to co-commentate. But you know that's the situation, and hopefully things will improve. And it is, oh, Lee's disappeared. Oh, no, oh, that's he's, it. He's I'm back. out. <laughs> he's, he's <gone. laughs> he's, he's, yeah. But you know, it, it happens, and yeah, not, not a minor thing. But I thought I'd mention it because so surprised by it. But there you go. Anyway, again, I said not the first one this pod to suffer this fate. Dave, how are you getting on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, but our request for having removed from the podcast hasn't worked, Lee. Well, there you They'll go. They'll keep trying, mate, I'm sure. There, but, there you know, you it's go. all about the community. But anyway, should we go back to the happy note of, you know, thank you again, everyone, for joining us this year. No idea why you're doing it. I'll be honest. Um, um, it's the stuff like we've just discussed mate it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's this it's this jovial bullish charm that we all seem to have so uh, yeah and hopefully in the new year everyone can you know keep coming together supporting the saints positivity come on um, <laughs> we'll, we'll be back uh, after the oxford game uh, towards the end of that week and either that week or the week after we shall have our first guest of next year which is likely to be a former central defender Carl Shorten Athletic Springs to Mindly. Very uh, much so. We'll have him on uh, a few weeks. And um, that's it. Keep the emails coming. To, uh, very always yeah. interesting to refer to. Yeah. Have a great Christmas, fellas. Have yeah. a great Christmas, everyone. And uh, please stay safe. And we'll see you on the terraces of Vauxhall Road. Yeah. Goodbye, Happy everyone. Christmas, everyone. Take care.